Are we supposed to start? I don't know. What do you think? I thought they were gonna give us a clear sign. Should we find someone to ask? What do you think, Charlie? as you guys are. What do you think? Just start. Go for it, Charlie. Really? Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, hello, everyone. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, lovely to see all of you. I am Charlie Caper from Furhat Robotics, and we build social robots. Today you will find out a little bit about what that is and what role they will play in the near future. So um, a social robot is a robot that you can communicate with the same way you would communicate with a human. So it can see, speak, hear and understand language and express and detect emotion. You can walk up to a fur hat and it can uh, see that you're there look you in the eye and say hello. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, if you smile, it can see that and smile back at you. Oh, that's a lovely smile, Furhat. Thanks, Charlie. If another person shows up, it can see them too, and it can keep track of many separate people at the same time. Uh, so it's got this great awareness of its surroundings. I think we can all agree this is pretty cool technology. But what will social robots contribute with to society? What is the point of social robots? Wow. I am shocked you are asking this question. You, of all people. No, it, it's a rhetorical question. I know the answer. I'm just asking it as a segue into the rest of the talk. Oh, I get it. Please continue. Okay, so up until now, we have communicated with technology on technology's terms. In the early days of computing, we used punch cards, uh, then came uh, keyboards, computer mice, touch screens, but none of these things come close to how we have communicated naturally for over 100,000 years, by speaking while seeing each other and sharing the same space. And us adapting to technology rather than the other way around, has become more and more apparent as we interact with devices more and more in our daily life. Now it is becoming possible to adapt technology to how humans function. Charlie, can you give them an example? Don't interrupt. We agree that she is the spokesperson. Um, I, I can give a bit of an example. Let's say I'm uh, at Lisbon train station and I need to go to Web Summit by public transport and I can't find someone to ask. So I would take out my phone, open up a browser, uh, make sure I have internet here in Portugal, type in W-E-B-S-U-M-M-I-T, find out where in Lisbon Web Summit is held, uh, then I go to the public transport page, uh, find out where I need to go, translate that into English, realize it's a little bit messy actually, so then maybe I search for the price of taxis here, just to make sure it's not crazy expensive, and then I look around the station and find out where to go. Or, um, excuse me, uh, how do I take the subway to Web Summit? The subway to Ortiz Arena, where Web Summit is held, leaves from down here on my right. Get off at Oriente and walk for 10 minutes to reach the arena. That sounds a little bit messy. How much is a taxi there? The taxi should cost around 10 to 12 euros from the taxi rank over there. Oh, thank you so much. Welcome to Lisbon. Enjoy Web Summit, and don't miss the talk about social robots. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. So, I would have found that information on my phone, right? But asking me was a bit easier. And I could probably have spoken with you in your own language, and also know all other kinds of information related to travel in central Lisbon. Yes, and for many people, like 
elderly grandparents or just people that aren't up to date with the latest technology, it's incredibly enabling to just be able to talk with technology represented by a human face. Uh, there's no learning curve or details to remember. Social robots will be a natural interface into other technologies. Of course, uh, they will enable everyone to use these technologies, not just the super techie people. And they will make life easier for the super techie people. Of course, we will not only use social interfaces, but they will be a very important way that we interact with machines. There's many different kinds of use cases for social robots, and we are far from having found all of them. OK, so what kind of things can I do? Well, um, this is from a project with Deutsche Bahn to create an information point in different languages at airports and train stations in understaffed locations. And uh, this is a project with healthcare giant Merck to create a medical screener for commonly undiagnosed diseases. And we worked with legendary uh, Japanese gaming company Bandai Namco to bring one of their animated manga characters to life in the physical world, in places such as theme parks. And this is one of my favorites. It looks so good. Uh, it's very, very expressive. And here we have a company called Tengai that specializes in unbiased recruitment. And they have used our robots for more than 2,000 real-life job interviews. So a very kind of high-stakes real-world situation. There will probably be some sort of personal social robots in our homes, but that's not uh, Ferhat's focus right now. We focus more on public-facing use cases, like the ones I mentioned or robots for researchers and innovation departments, and uh, areas like um, uh, autism therapy. And this one is really fascinating because some kids on the spectrum can enjoy interactions with a robot that would be overwhelming with a human. So it can be a really great way to practice social skills. It seems like a strange thing to practice human social skills with a robot, but in many cases it works. Yep, and then we have use cases uh, such as uh, education, uh, retail. The fact that robot can speak a multitude of languages also makes it great for areas in tourism. There's multiple fur hats. It, there's fur hats in multiple museums around the world. And uh, or as an assistant to receptionist, for instance. Falo muito bem português. That's Portuguese, I think. I don't speak it. So. And Japanese, we get it for it. You speak a lot of languages. I speak over 40 languages right out of the box. How many languages do you speak? I, um... It was a rhetorical question. Oh. <laughs> Did I use that correctly? Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. A little sharp, maybe. But, um... Oh. Okay. I see the value of just talking with technology. But why does there need to be a robot? Why not just a voice assistant? That is a pretty good question. And the answer is that in some cases, a voice agent will do just fine. And in other cases, a robot is far better. And in between those, we can imagine an animation of a character on a screen. All of these will exist, but in different situations. Even we at Furhat have a virtual version of a robot that's fine to interact with, but we only use it for development and not for real use cases because we can see how much better people interact with a physical robot. What? No one told me this. Sorry, buddy. Hanging out with me is cooler than hanging out with you. Yeah, it's true. Sorry. Why is this the case? Why is it better if it's physical? Well, to start with, there's the simple fact that we intuitively feel that something can see if it has eyes and speak if it has a mouth. And research shows a robot is more engaging both cognitively and emotionally than a character on a screen, which is not so strange. There, there is something special about being in a room together. I mean, look, there's a large amount of people watching this live. 
you chose to come here for a reason, right? Why? And I think we have all suffered during the pandemic from only being able to see our loved ones through a screen. At least to me, it's painfully apparent it is not the same thing. Human social interaction is a really complex interplay. The intonation of your voice, your facial expressions, your body language, the position of your head, where your eyes are looking, all affect the meaning of what's being said, who it is said to, when you should speak and when you should listen, the whole flow of the conversation. For obvious reasons, those aspects of communication are vastly improved with a robot, because you need a head uh, and a face to convey it. Facial expressions also enable nuance, contrast, and humor. How expressive can a robot be? Well, well I can record my facial expressions and play them back on the robot. As you can see, it is pretty accurate. And I can do things with my face humans cannot. Wow, you guys look a bit weird. I'm both uh, happy and kind of sad. I can't do that. <laughs> Finally, eye contact and a smile is just good for us. It activates the social and emotional parts of our brain. And maybe some of you are thinking, this sounds silly. I don't care if a robot smiles at me or not. It's not real. But is that really how it works? Yeah, how do you feel looking at this? Creatures, even things that smile, affect us emotionally. No matter how real it is, it triggers something in our brain. We connect. I would guess this is not a real smile. I'm not sure if this frog is happy. Maybe it just has resting smile face. But I feel something. It's even possible to connect with this cup of coffee. I mean, look at this creature. Hey, buddy, I feel like we share an interest in milk and sugar. What do you say, Farhat? Oh, I want to get that coffee drunk. Drunk, yeah, OK. <laughs> Feeling connected is very important to our well-being. And one special thing about our species is that we are social animals evolved to interact socially with the world. And it's kind of unfortunate that we have developed so many devices that do not really take that into account. Social robots have a potential to help change that, to bridge that gap a little bit. I couldn't have said it better myself, but Charlie, you do not have a lot of time left. You should wrap it up. Okay, thanks. Robots such as Furhat are already being deployed around the world. And there's no doubt our society will include social robots in some shape or form going forward. But we are still at the early stage. And the next five or 10 years will really set the path for how humans and robots exist together. All of us, not just robot makers, but also you as tech enthusiasts and innovators have an opportunity to be part of shaping what that future of ro robots and humans should look like. And I don't know about you, but to me, that's pretty exciting. Do you have anything to add, Farhat? No, that was good. I would clap if I had hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nobody noticed. Go to furhatrobotics.com for more information. Stop it with the self-promotion. You're always doing that. No, come and meet us instead. We're here for two more days. Yep. Um, thank you so much, folks. Um,
and we'll let you end with a robot farewell.